Before I start going on a complete tangent about Vietnam, just wanted to say a quick message to our good friends in the Laotian FA. I know I'm a little bit late on this, but I did say I was going to be on break and I was not going to go off break just to make one video. Adding to that though, thank you for 30k on Christmas Day. I don't think you guys realize that is the best Christmas present I have ever gotten in my life. But on top of that, thank you also for 40k. What is going on? <laughs> also, if you didn't know, the Vietnam video from November, I think, is at over 100,000 views. I didn't think that was ever gonna happen, but it, here we are, I guess, so <laughs> thank you there too. I'm sorry this intro is a little bit long, but before we go into this real quick, if we could get 2,000 likes on this video, that would be fantastic. So a quick note, I am only going to be talking about the AFF championship matches that involved Vietnam. I would have loved to watch more of the matches, but I am not waking up at 7.30 in the morning more than I need to. So in the AFF championship, Vietnam drew with Laos, Malaysia, Indonesia, and Cambodia. Laos were Vietnam's very first opponent, and for a change, Vietnam finally had most of the possession in a match. That was mainly because of Laos' low block pretty much immediately into the match. And in all fairness to Laos, when money isn't involved, they're structured pretty well. Vietnam struggled a ton to break down the low block. Most of the time they'd be utilizing early crosses or throw-ins from the right side, and quite literally only the right side of the pitch. Sometimes they'd even go for my favorite move, the hopeless long shot. The Golden Dragons would eventually score through both Wing Gong Fung and Fan Van Duk, but in no way did that communicate were the tournament favorites to me. One other thing about this match was the legendary Billy K. I'm gonna not say his last name in full because I feel like that's just gonna insult him. But Billy made his senior debut for Laos at age 31 and looked very dangerous. Despite him being the only player to actually threaten the Vietnamese defense, I was still pretty worried about him at times. Had that man been given just a little bit of a source of creativity, I wouldn't doubt for a second that he'd score one or even two goals. But yeah, all in all, really unconvincing performance by Vietnam. It is the opening match, however. So, on to the next one. Malaysia. In this match, it was by far the best performance I had seen from the Vietnamese pretty much in the entire tournament. Vietnam started significantly better than they did against Laos, and Nguyen Quang Hai actually starting this match definitely played a part in that. As he'd scored the very first goal of the match, and dear lord does this man have a cannon for a foot. He assisted the second goal, where Nguyen Quang Phuong did what I do to score in FIFA 16. Then to close off the match, Nguyen Hoang Duc goes from providing the defense another man to scoring the third. That goal is Nguyen Thuan An's second assist, and he'd be man of the match with an exceptional performance. Indonesia were up next, and I was a little more confident going into this one. Needless to say, that confidence died pretty quickly. Indonesia, managed by South Korea's former coach, have some really bright talent for the future. This nation also has a soft spot in my heart, as it's where this goddess was born. Yeah, that brother's starving. Anyways, Indonesia in the match used a 5-4-1 formation with a low block, and, you know, they're much better than the match-fixing merchants, so they defended exceptionally well. There were some smart fouls that disrupted the Vietnamese rhythm, albeit some tackles looking like they were from WWE. Indonesia did a great job in the box making sure that no Vietnamese player could get a clear shot on goal. Now, on the Vietnamese side of things, even though Indonesia did a fantastic job and they deserve all the credit in the world, we were really underwhelming. You guys remember the qualifying video where I talked about how Vietnam could not find the final pass? <laughs> well, it's back, baby. There he is! There's my favorite- Ineffective attack. Never did this team get a single clear opportunity, as you could see from Vietnam's one shot on target out of 21. Pretty disappointing, but again, credit to Indonesia. They put their hearts on the line and it really paid off. The last match of the group stage for Vietnam was Cambodia. And thanks to the match-fixing merchants losing 5-1 to Indonesia, that meant Vietnam were second thanks to goal difference. So Vietnam needed to go balls to the walls and score as many goals as they could. And the Golden Dragons scored four past Cambodia. Pretty good stuff there. Unfortunately, Indonesia scored four against Malaysia, so they maintained first place. Also, remember Kasuke Honda? Along with another Japanese man, he is currently joint head coach of Cambodia. So it'll be interesting to see how this national team develops under the 35-year-old. So now, the AFF Championship semi-finals, two legs, 
both at the same neutral stadium. But as Vietnam did finish second in their group, they had to face Thailand, who finished first in theirs. And let me give you a little bit of Thai football lore before we go into the match. So after winning the AFF Championship in 2016, Thailand in the next edition didn't bring their best possible team in 2018. And that costed them big time, as they lost to Malaysia on away goals in the semi-finals. So in 2021, Thailand decided to get serious again and call up their best squad, including Chana Tip Songkrasin, who didn't play in 2018. Unlike the fraudulent title Viet Messi, this guy is actually the Thai Messi in how he plays. He's currently a regular starter in the J League. Chana Tip actually just moved to last year's league winner's Kawasaki Frontale, so I'm just saying, this guy's pretty good. But to put it simply, Vietnam were in for a massive challenge to retain that title. But you know what? I've been pretty harsh on Vietnam. I believe. I believe that we can win. So, uh... Thailand were so much better than us. They ran circles around Vietnam throughout the entire first half, and their passes were just so crisp and clean compared to whatever the hell we were doing. Thailand grabbed another goal in this fashion with Chana Tip receiving the ball deep and progressing past the Vietnamese back line via some one-twos with his teammates. It appeared the Thais also took a note from Indonesia's playbook, which was smart fouls to interrupt the Vietnamese rhythm. However, some of the fouls were... A little questionable. Into the second half, there was just a lot more passiveness, because Thailand didn't really need to do much other than control the game. And Vietnam were just as effective as they were in the first half. Constantly, they were messing up touches and passes, and you could feel the hesitation in every step. There was only one good Vietnamese performance in Nguyen Quang Hai, who was unlucky to hit both the post and the crossbar. He was at the top of his game, trying to split through the defense, trying to get some passes into the box, all that kind of stuff, but he just had no help. Now, Thailand had a chance to score on a penalty later on. This was definitely not a penalty. Now, I'm not trying to make this a full excuse, but the officials were not really that great. But anyways, game ends 2-0. I want to off myself. On to the second leg. So, was the second leg any different? No. N no, it wasn't. You could literally take the second half of the first leg, duplicate it, and that would be the entire second leg. Because again, Wing Kwang Hai was on that no help type beat, and it was so frustrating to watch this attack. On top of that, when we did get the chance, a clear shot on goal, which was very rare even in the second leg when we were attacking most of the time, the finishing was woeful. Anyways, game ended nil-nil. Eventually, Thailand would win the entire thing. Big respects to Thailand, and really every opponent. Besides Laos. Laos. Oh, and another thing, for anyone who enjoys a wild match, just watch the entire replay of Indonesia versus Singapore in the second leg of the semifinals. So, with all that now gone, we return to World Cup qualifying, and we're facing Australia and China. Man, we're actually gonna finish with zero points, aren't we? It is great to be back on the channel, however. I cannot wait for what the future has in store for us. A massive shout out to all our patrons, of course. Janos Balas, Adroi, Daniel Ortiz, Joseph Bonfante, Wing Din Min Tang, Scott Skunk, Tom Bombadil, Victor, Dominic Griffin, Emmett Shea, Lewis, Big Bird, Cash Getty, Exo, and Casa. If you'd like to join the Patreon, there'll be a link down below and in the annotations above. You could follow my Twitter for any video updates, all that kind of stuff. Follow my Instagram if you want. Follow my TikTok, I'm trying to get to 4,000, I guess. And you can also follow my inactive Twitch. But until then, I'll see you guys.